The other day I was watching YouTube and a video from Cole Steele about the expandable baton came out and I thought to myself, yeah, I'm gonna have to get me one of those. Stick around. You gotta love Cole Steel because there's a lot of stuff in their product catalog that will deeply encourage others to keep their hands to themselves. But of course, you've got those out there who like to mess around and find out. And because these folks exist, you can always count on Cold Steel to provide something to help you fix that issue. Now, I know, I know a lot of you can't have these batons depending upon where you live. Now, I don't know how much of that applies to hiking and things like that, but I know a lot of you live in areas where you can't just carry a baton. Now, they've got this one and they've got a shorter one, but I felt like this one worked a lot better for my taste. And here's your specs. You've got a 16 inch baton length. The overall length is 26 inches. Now the steel here is this STKM118. It's 19.6 ounces in weight and it's got a 10 inch handle. Here's the sheath that it comes with. These things kind of make me feel a little bit like a, a Jedi, you know? It's always fun to talk about these self-defense weapons with regards to their effectiveness. And what can I say? This thing is a club. It's a dangerous club. It's a deadly club, and if you get caught with it at the wrong place at the wrong time, it's going to drop you like a bad habit. Now, I have seen times when a law enforcement officer has been dealing with a really obnoxious, like, person that just won't quit. Like, there was this one guy one time, he just wouldn't stop, and man, and the law enforcement officer took out the baton and started wearing his legs out, and the guy just kept going. Eventually, somebody just come up and, like, tased him, and he finally dropped now, taking a few swats to the legs is one thing. Taking one of these to the dome is another. Every so often, people will come in the comments and say, yeah, that thing will get you arrested. Well, yeah, that's true, because plenty of people who were innocent and defended themselves got arrested. One thing they didn't get was killed. We most definitely need to think about the legal side of things, and you do need to check your state laws. You need to use wisdom, discernment, situational awareness, and try to stay out of situations like this at all costs. But life does not always allow people that opportunity. When an attacker comes to take your life or the lives of someone that you love, you need to first think about defending them before thinking about going to prison. Your kids can still come to visit you in prison. And if you saved their life, they're not gonna be coming to see you in prison like you're some kind of loser. That's why deadly force is always a last resort because there are so many implications. Sometimes deadly force is needed and sometimes deadly force is not needed. It just depends on the situation. Now with a baton, you may or may not be successful. Just because you have a self-defense weapon doesn't mean you're gonna be successful with it. I've seen people get bats, batons, and things like that taken away from them, used against them. Just because you have a weapon doesn't mean you're going to be successful in defending yourself. It does greatly increase your chances, and it is an equalizer. Something like this can break bones. It can break arms, it can break hands, uh, it can break legs. Uh, it hits really hard, this is very heavy. Now to close the baton, just tap it against the ground. Now I will tell you that these do bend. If you hit them hard enough against something that it doesn't destroy, the thing that it doesn't destroy will bend this baton. It's not indestructible. These things are designed to be used on something that's got some give. You know, assailants are not always people. Sometimes an assailant could be a rabid animal. Sometimes an assailant could be you know, somebody's dog who's done gotten unhinged and he's ready to attack. It happens every day. I'm constantly reading about dog attack fatality. But it hurts to get hit with something like this. It hurts bad. It breaks bones. And it's like being able to walk around with a stick, but a stick that's got some power and a stick that's very compact until you need it to be large. <laughs> you can just hear the power in the swing. To close this video, let's talk a little bit about the reality of using a baton. One time I did a video titled Baseball Bats and Self-Defense and talked about some of the realities of using a baseball bat. The one thing you've got to think about with something like this is there's a pretty good deal of time between your swing and the point of contact. And more often than not, swings get intercepted. In fact, all somebody's got to do to interrupt a good swing is to close the distance. 
The other scary part about using a weapon for self-defense is having that weapon taken from you and used against you. The one advantage the baton has to the baseball bat is speed. It's not gonna hit as hard as like a cold steel bat like the, the Brooklyn Basher, but it does sting. It hurts really bad, obviously, and you can move a little bit quicker with it. And a lot of times if you're using a baton in self-defense, you don't often get the chance to just come in and take the perfect swing because the person sees it coming. They have time to kind of jump back. They have time to, to rush ahead. So, you know, if you're looking for a clean shot, oftentimes you got to set up a clean shot. An assailant is not going to fear something like this as much as he's going to fear a gun or a knife. If you have to use something like this and you have to fight with it, well, you have to know something of what you're doing. And this is just one of the harsh realities of any kind of self-defense. If you hit somebody with this, it may not hurt them. You may hit them on a part of their body that you don't get a lot of response and it's just gonna make them more angry and determined. One of the greatest attributes to have in self-defense is the element of surprise, speed, and accuracy. So here's what it all comes down to. Regardless of what you use for self-defense, you've got to train with it. You've got to find good resources for training, ways that you can develop your skill set depending upon what you plan on carrying every day. The cold steel baton is definitely a nifty little tool. It's got its advantages and disadvantages. It's dangerous, it's bone breaking, it's hard hitting, but you have to check your state regulations to see whether or not you can get one of these used. Some states, you can't even have a baton shipped to you. Um, I know here in my state, in Virginia, I'm, I'm able to carry a baton openly. I can't carry spring batons here in Virginia, but I've never even seen one of those anyway. And you know, there's a time and a place for everything. For me, a baton like this would be something that I'd like to have on me just as another piece of protection, you know, out on the trail. I'm always in the woods. I'm always walking on trails. And uh, I usually carry my firearm and I've always got a blade, but this is a nice companion to have as well. And I think the baton could be a good home defense weapon just to have around, especially if you can ambush and get a good clean shot from an unaware assailant. And uh, don't let up if you ever have to do that. Don't depend on one shot. You gotta depend on many. You gotta go until they quit. But it's just one of many options and I hope you enjoyed this review. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Do you have this baton? Have you ever carried a baton? Have you ever used a baton in self-defense? Do you know of anyone who's ever used one? I'd love to hear your story and your perspective. Thank you so much for watching and take care.